Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Sherry Lukacs today, and she is a special guest because she has her own podcast on our show. She's part of our podcast community, and she is just an amazing individual. She is the founder of Red House Wellness, and she is here today to talk about uh, stress and anxiety, how we all suffer from it but how we could actually get over it. And she's going to tell you some great techniques, tools, and hacks that you could apply to your own life to get over the stress and anxiety that enters our life on a daily basis. So Sherry, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and, and let's get right into the stress and anxiety because I want to know how do we get over that stress and anxiety? Well, thank you, Stacy. It's so good to see you again. It's the second time being on your show and I look forward to it and the wisdom and the insight that you give. And um, as you said, I'm the founder of Red House Wellness. And I think I've been studying this stress, anxiety, the human mind, how to be calmer, how to be more at ease since maybe three or four when I started to walk and talk. <laughs> Fascinating. So usually, in, in my opinion, I find that we get into the field that we teach about from our challenges and adversities. Yeah. So- if you heard the saying, turn your mess into a message, yeah. So I, think I have been given different challenges and situations in my life, and I could either figure out how to work them work for me or against me, how right. I can work from them or fight them. Yeah. You know, expand and look at it. Oh my God, maybe this is a gift and I don't know it yet. And how yeah. can I stay open to receive? Right. The opposite is I fight it. I don't want it. I constrict, I contract, lack of, and then it just gets harder and harder. Right. When you talk about stress and anxiety, I truly believe that stress and anxiety, one of the ways that it shows up is a need of ours is not being met. Mm -hmm. So you expect something and I expect something. Right. Right. I don't get what I want, then I get angry, upset, stressful. It's not going my way. And I have felt and studied that it usually comes from the heart. And the four things from the heart are appreciation, appreciation, mm -hmm. affection, acceptance, and attention. Mm -hmm. So if one of those elements is not being met, or a form of that appreciation, attention, acceptance, one of those, then we start to get upset and angry. Right. That makes and sense. also, if we are not understanding what is happening in the situation, we get very stressful. We don't know enough about it. Yeah. So instead of asking questions, and being curious and being open, mm -hmm. we shut down and we're like, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It just be my way. I'm not getting the appreciation I think I deserve from you right. or, the or the acceptance. So therefore, I fight it. And the more I fight it, then the more I get closed and I can't see a way out. Yes. So if we took a moment and we take a deep breath, and I always say, before you inhale, we should exhale. Right. Now, Stacy, let's just exhale. <sighs> so before we can start to inhale and fill ourselves up, mm -hmm. it's always a good practice to exhale and release. That makes sense. And when we have anxiety, stress, overload, we're fearful, we feel constricted, our breath gets very shallow yeah. and we start to go like this and yeah. our heart rate goes up, our blood pressure goes up, you know, our hormones that help activate and our longevity hormones, they start to decrease. We start to perspire. Everything starts to get like this. Yeah. Which us back to the beginning when we had the fight and flight yes 
in the very beginning, I think we talked about this before, we were made to have a fight or flight situation. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to restore and recover. Yes. And so when you exhale and take a deep breath and you start slowing your breath, let's just breathe together. Inhale, slow, belly goes out, exhale, belly goes in. And one more time, inhale, who's ever listening, inhale, belly goes out. Exhale, belly goes in. We start to slow our nervous system. Yes. You start to slow your nervous system. You tell your body that you're safe, mm -hmm. that you're okay. You don't have to fight. You don't have to run. You don't have to be ready. You just have to be in a place where you're open mm -hmm. and then you can ask questions, be curious, mm -hmm. maybe say, I don't, I'm not, not understanding you. Yeah. Instead of being in that place of constriction mm -hmm. and it's like having the abundance open mindset versus the close end this is going wrong. Nothing is going the way I want it to. The closed mindset. Yeah. With the stress and anxiety, I would say right now, first thing to do is just exhale. Don't even take a breath. Try to release and let go. Mm -hmm. And then if you realize with the breath, if you slow the breath and take two or three deep breaths as slow as you can, you'll start to lower your heart rate. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure goes down. Your nervous system is relaxed. And then your mind is open to be like, what am I even arguing about? Yeah. Or can I hold the space for Steph for Stacy to think on the right side and I to think on the left side? Mm -hmm. So we're much more, I feel, compassionate and open to have a conversation and a dialogue with respect and kindness mm -hmm. versus frustration and angry. Right. So it usually comes from the heart, which I have witnessed in my many years of experience and lack of information. That's why we get so angry and stressful and we want things to go our way. Mm -hmm. I was doing my meditation today and it was on, we have control over our words you know, our thoughts, when they start to go one way, we can bring them back. Right. Our words, our thoughts, our actions, our deeds. But we don't really have a lot of control of the fruits of those deeds. Yeah. So I could say, Stacy, you're amazing. You're wonderful. I can't wait to hear more about you. And I'm so open. And then you could say something to me mm -hmm. that is totally not what I want to hear. Right. And that's when I start to get upset and angry. Well, you did not respond the way I wanted you to. So in that situation, it's about staying open and trusting and having faith in the higher power, your divine self, whatever you believe. I like to look at it is when we set an intention, we're in the driver's seat. Right. This is what I... And then you need to have the faith and the trust to move in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Let the events unfold without you controlling. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is another reason we get so like, I want you to show up at five o'clock and bring the dessert and not be late and put a smile on your face and enjoy the meal. You're like yeah. all things I just put in that situation and I'm trying to control and if I just said, my intention is to have you come over and any way that you come over and maybe you've had a rough day, maybe you forgot the dessert, right. you didn't up the bottle of wine, you <laughs> showed up late and I can stay, let me stay open to the moment and see if I can try to understand where you're coming from and not my agenda of what I want to happen. Right. And then with the faith and the trust, you'll find that the situation will unfold 
And I like to say it's a lesson or a blessing. We can learn from it. Yeah. I expect what I want you to do and how I want you to do it. And I want to control everything. As you know, Stacy. We can't. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you're speaking to somebody and you're open-minded, but the person could be open-minded, but they chose not to be, how do you handle that situation? Now, do you just give it to your higher power? Do you just, you know, you did what you can and you just let it go? Because a lot of people suffer from that let it go part. It's hard. Your feelings have been hurt. You're in a situation that things didn't turn out exactly the way you want. So maybe your emotions are unsettled. You know, whatever the case may be that brought that stress and anxiety on. You know, if the other side isn't working with you and they're working against you, then how do you handle the situation so you don't let it affect you? Do you just do the best you can on your side and just just let it go and let it, whatever happens, happens? You know, how do you handle those situations so it doesn't, that, that stress and anxiety doesn't get to you? You did your part the best you could on your side. Now, how do you just let it go and move on? Great question, Stacy. And I think I've been in both spots. <laughs> in the spot where I'm not going to let it go and I want to control it and I kind of force it in there. And I always ask myself, which feels better? Like, this is a question I ask my inner mind, which feels better? Yeah. Be, no, that shouldn't happen that way. This is the way it happens. And in my heart, when I ask myself, which feels better, it doesn't feel better. Yeah. Sometimes I, I just tell myself and I breathe because when you exhale and then take a deep breath, you're bringing clarity. And as you know, when we bring clarity yeah. and calmness and stillness inside to us, we make better choices. We do. We do. We all know that when we're like fired up, ready to go. And both of us, we could just, and you attract the type of energy you want. So if right. I'm fired up and I'm ready to go and I come in like this and you don't have the tools, you're going to fire up, go like this. And we're going to go like this. Yeah. So if I feel if one person has the tools and I like to say I'm an alchemist, mm -hmm. which I change the energy. If I remember, exhale, fill myself with compassion. Look at it like maybe or ask, you're having a rough day. Right. I have no idea what just happened. Mm -hmm. I can come in softer with a little more ease and a little more grace. Yeah. And I feel that the situation, I can just say, wow. Sometimes I just go, wow. Yeah. I did not expect that. Like I didn't expect that to happen. I'm using that with my husband. He'll come in like this. And I'm, instead of being, I can't believe you just said that. Why did you say that? Do you think that? That's not true. I just go, wow. And that gives me time to say, what just happened? And then sometimes he goes, wow. Like, <laughs> what, what just transpired? Right. I used to, and I still sometimes, as I picture myself, like raising up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a funny, you have to picture it. Like out of my body, like in a yeah. ceiling. And I rise a little bit and I say, you know, are you feeling kinder, more compassionate with more love? No. So I get higher and, <laughs> higher and higher. And sometimes I go out of the building all the way up to the sky because I'm so angry and I'm mad and I want it my way. And if I keep like just going higher and higher, I look at it from a different perspective and it's yeah. internal words and thoughts. Yeah. Keep me in a more like, wow, like what just happened? Yeah. You have a choice on your words and your impact on what we talk about. Right. And what we think and where we guide the kind. So sometimes you just have to keep rising up right. to a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I said, sometimes you go up to the ceiling, you got to go yeah. outside the building, you got to go higher, 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 higher. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Because the biggest gift we can give each other through transformation is changing ourselves. Yes. So it goes back to not what did Stacy come in with? What did you bring? What am I bringing? Yeah. 
that is a challenge. Like you said, you answered your own questions. You know, how do I be better? How do I be kinder when, when I know I'm right? Especially, you know, in a situation like I said, four o'clock and you showed up at four 30, like, and you said, Oh no, I didn't, I didn't think we showed up. We were supposed to be there at four o'clock. And you're like, I know I was right. <laughs> you know, oh, you're right. And it's like, does it really matter? But right now we're here. Yeah. And is that what we want to talk about? Was it four? Was it four 30? Or am I able to do an internal shift? Yeah. Go inside and shift it with breathing, with the thoughts and saying, how can I be better right now? Yeah. So that you feel more comfortable and I can help your stress or anxiety or frustration, whatever you're coming in with, how can I help calm so that we can talk about it in an effective manner that serves both of us? Right. I like uh, that. Answered that question. I, I got to tell you, when you did the breathing exercises, it did, it just totally, it just took me down a level It just of relaxation and calmness. And I went from just being regular, you know, just feeling, you know, how I feel to a point where I, I felt, I felt more serene and calm and, and it did, it, it kind of, it made my clarity, you know, and my focus even better, you know, just by doing the exhale, inhale exhale in oh, and sighing sometimes we just need to sigh and go because oh. yeah. it's the nervous system that gets yeah. very worked up and gets us like this and it goes from chaos to clarity like we have that power yeah master your mind your thoughts your words starting with your breath slowing down mm -hmm. so that say how can I make this situation better even if it wasn't you're not the cause of it mm -hmm. part of it you're in it and I think we all I, I shouldn't talk for everyone I should talk for myself I want to add value and make the world like like the world I want to make the situation I want to make the conversation better yeah start with with personally you coming into it right saying you know you make me mad you got me angry. I was great. You know, I allow you. Yeah. To so, because I'm not getting what I want. See, there it goes back again. When I don't get what I want and I, and I say, you got me, you, you angered me. I have to take responsibility and accept yeah. it and say, I allowed you. Yeah. Buffle my feathers. Mm -hmm. I can take a deep breath and exhale. And accept this moment and it is what is and then how can I just be better and I could have started it doesn't really matter but here we are now yeah and I don't want to continue down a path that doesn't serve me or you or be angry and upset and and say things we don't mean because we know our tongues are vicious yep they can hurt worse than physical assaults yeah people so I tried now to think calmly before I speak. Yes. And um, there's, uh, I don't know if you ever heard the three gateways of wisdom. Have you heard that? I've heard the concept, but I don't remember what three gateways are. They say it different ways, but I learned it is number one. Whenever you're going to speak, before you speak, you ask yourself, is it true? Mm -hmm. Is it true? Did I hear it from someone? Is it gossip? Did mm -hmm. I kind of elaborate? You know, you never come home. Yeah, I do come home. I just come home late. I mean, like, mm -hmm. is it true? So before yeah. you say something, is it true? Mm -hmm. Second one, is it kind? Because it could be true. Right. But is it kind? Yeah. Is that a kind thing to say to someone? Right. The third one is it necessary? Mm -hmm. Aristotle said, the words you are about to speak, does it improve and add value to the silence? Yeah. <laughs> so you could be at a dinner party and there could be 10 people and you and I could be across the uh, table from each other. You could have spinach in your mouth. <laughs> it's true spinach. 
But for me to say, hey, Stacy, you got spinach in your teeth. Right. Would, it'd be best to get up to walk over and whisper, hey, you know, you look so great, but you have spinach in your mouth. <laughs> so there's a kind way to say things that are truthful. Yeah. Sometimes it's truthful. You're saying it kind, but you don't really need to say it. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm trying to be more impeccable and more aware of mm -hmm. the word that I say. Say less with more meaning. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. I've worked on that the last couple of years and boy, does it make it a difference. And you actually draw a lot of positive energy in people when you do that. When you when you stop and you think before you speak and you revise the what you're going to say, if you and you might even decide not to say it at all, you know, because if it's, you know, if you stop and think first and you just don't react, because that's the problem is too many people let their emotions get ahead of themselves. And then they just react and then they cause problems and stress for the other person. And then that's when the, the problem occurs, you know, and sometimes like we mentioned about letting go some, for some people, it could really, you know, especially if they had a traumatic event and it triggers something from their past, it could really damper a person, you know? So it's always like you mentioned, it's always good to stop and think. And do I, is it necessary? You know, if I, if it is necessary, how could I say it? So it's not harmful, you know, to the other person. Right. Exactly. There's a lot of things we can do with our words before we say them out loud. That's why I think we were given two ears and one mouth. Yes. And sometimes exactly. too much and we don't like even allow other people to speak. We're always talking and we want to interrupt people. Yes. You know, the people that you interrupt and it's like, just close my mouth and let someone else talk because now it is their turn to share. Yeah. I want them to feel that that they're worthy of their voice and what mm -hmm. they're doing. And I don't need to jump in and interrupt and be, you know, that person. Right. Sit back and allow to let and that changes life so much you know as we leave here today as we all go back into our home at the dinner table try that just try to close your mouth open your ears and i find that has been an amazing thing to allow others to truly speak without me interrupting or thinking the next thing i'm going to say because i can't even hear you yes like, say this i want to say this i'm not truly engaging in what you're trying to tell me right very true. And that was something I had practiced too. And it wasn't because I wanted to be rude. I was just so excited because I had something related to what you were saying and I wanted to share it. But at the same time, if I interrupted you, I kind of cut you off from your story, which wasn't nice either, you know? So over the course of the years, I learned to listen rather than speak. And, and if I had something afterwards, I could add after the person was finished and gave them that respect, then I added it and kept the conversation going. But boy, does it make a difference when you let that person have the limelight and that person feels good because they got to share, they got to express, they got to show, you know, and, and, and tell the things they wanted to, to that group of people or person. Exactly. And, and people have to realize too, that stress could be very harmful. I said, said it in so many of my shows, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So when you think about how damaging stress could be, it is so important that we take different, you know, strategies like the ones that you're explaining right now and incorporate it into our daily lives to the point where we don't even realize we're doing it, that we just do it. And it calms us down and gets us to that point where we could actually, you know, let go and let go of that stress and let go of that anxiety and get to that point of calmness and happiness that we all deserve. Yeah. And meditation or some form of introspective is so healthy. Yeah. I talked about it on our first podcast, just sitting for five minutes. Mm-hmm closing your eyes and just saying, let go, mm -hmm. let go, let go. Sometimes I just 
take my timer out five minutes. Everybody has five minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what, do, what it does to the internal part of your body, like your nervous system slows down, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your longevity hormones are able to be activated to keep you health, healthy. Yeah. We don't ever connect to the stillness, the silence, our higher power, our divine self, mm -hmm. which is constantly out there like little chipmunks, just like running around all the time. You know, the yeah. little mouse that goes around on the little wheel. So if you're looking to help reduce the stress, yes, reduce the anxiety, to find more peace and calmness, yeah. first is awareness, mm -hmm. acceptance. I call it the ABCs, awareness, acceptance, find your breath. Yes. Breathe until, like you said, Stacy, keep breathing to physically you find a difference in your physiology. Yeah. And then you can continue mm -hmm. to realize that you have choices. Yeah. And to move forward. Right. Because anytime we feel stuck and we don't find we have a way out, that is something that is so detrimental to the mind and to the body. That's when deep depression sets in. Yes. And once you can come back and say, I have a choice. Mm -hmm. You need to find it from your inside. Yeah. You a heart connection mm -hmm. that you're worthy. And this goes back to beliefs and the way we were raised. And, you know, there's a whole line of why some people are more, say, positive and some are more negative and some deal with things better than others. Yeah. It starts when we're a child. Mm -hmm. and that our parents, our caretakers, or our teachers, our friends said things, they bothered us, we believed them. It's our belief systems that yeah. are that's the emotions and the thoughts. So awareness mm -hmm. is like the number one key because when you're aware of something, then you can choose to change or to work on evolving yes. a journey ongoing. Because I don't ever, I don't tell people there's nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. not, you're not broken. There's nothing wrong. We just need to go inside and find that place where we feel whole and worthy again. Yes. And it, I, 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 my greatest teacher told me that, and it changed from me feeling I'm broken, something's wrong, I need to fix myself, to I'm perfect and beautiful the way I am. Yes. I just need to remember to go inside and fill up that love, the compassion, the gratitude, the appreciation. Yes. And when I fill it up, then I can exhale and send it out and be kinder and nicer and appreciate and have gratitude with you yes. and with others. So that's how come we need to keep going inside and meditation, mm -hmm. journaling in the morning and at night, even five minutes with your breathing yeah. will help you connect to what you truly want. What you want, Stacey, and what I want in life could be completely different. Right. I've lived in the pursuit of happiness. So we need to connect to that so that you're on your journey and I'm on my journey. Yes. And together as we intercross and intermingle, we are doing it with kindness and 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 compassion and grace and ease so that we can help each other. Yes. Along the way on this journey, because we're not separate. We are one. And once we start to realize we are one as a collective. Yes. The world is fighting and we are fighting. That energy is fighting. Yes. What's going on right now, which we won't talk about in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we are calmer and nicer, then we start spreading that. Yes. It just spreads. And it, it, I think it's, it is, I know it's the ripple effect. You go to the grocery mm -hmm. store, you smile to someone and they just, they smile. Then they yeah. take that smile and it just, it's like the stone that goes into the pond that goes bounce, 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 bounce. We don't realize how far our ripple goes in either direction. Yes. Being kind and being mean. 
Mm -hmm. list where you have a choice. Where do you want that to go? How do you exactly. want to show it? Yeah. Exactly. It really matters in life. It does, you know, and I, I, you know, the, and if you put out that positive energy, you know, you you not only receive positive energy, but like you said, the ripple effect, you know, there are many times I've walked in a store and I've just looked at someone and they, oh, you know, that's a pretty blouse. And they just, their face glue, you know, just like it was, they had this big smile. Oh, thank you. You know, and you could tell that you made their day, you know, and just by one simple compliment to somebody. Or even if you smile at somebody or held the door, you know, that act of kindness goes such a long way. And I, and I love too what you said about just going into the heart because the heart is the root, you know, and it, and it really, you know, if you listen to your heart, yeah, I know we're supposed to say like our, our ground is the root, but really like the heart is where it's all at. It begins, you know, and if you really connect in your heart, you know, the words will flow. You could start journaling and those words will just come from your heart and down on paper or into your mind. And a lot of times it's just messages, just messages that, you know, that your body is trying to get out. And it just, you know, and if you just connect if and like you said, with meditation and just, you know, and just being able to just focus and be able to focus on positive things like letting go, saying that over and over again, letting go letting go, calming yourself and just letting go of that energy that's holding you back before you know it, that energy is gone. And here you are, you're, you're feeling new, you know, anew, and you're just feeling like, like you just like a changed person in a sense. Yeah. I love what you said about like the heart is a foundation and in yoga, especially yoga practices, we ground down with our feet to get our foundation. Yeah. That just stabilizes to then have the energy come up into our heart. Yes. Make mm -hmm. that go out, you yes. know? So it is like the seven chakras. We have seven chakras in our body yes. and it mm -hmm. starts with, you know, the root chakra. Right. By the tip of our, but it's like you, you ground down and then you pull in and then the heart, you know, shoulders back, heart open, and you literally will change the way you think, opening your heart like this versus slumping contracting going like this yeah. the same thoughts and words that come out of your mouth it has been proven change when you change yeah your heart and you open that heart and you say i'm gonna start and like we say you know i i had this decision it came from my heart or people die from heartache yeah people die from heartache yeah. You hear a couple that have been, you know, married 55 years and he dies. And two weeks later, there was nothing wrong with her. They say that she died. And what I've been reading is her heart has hurt so much that it changes the rhythm. Yes. Actually creates like a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So much sadness. Yeah. She has physically created the disease that then the doctors say she died of a heart attack. Yeah. Or a, you can, you can do that. Oh, you hear it all the time. All the time. You hear stories like that. Yeah. And that's why I also say on the opposite side, following your heart, like, does this feel good? Does this is an alignment with what makes me happy? Mm -hmm. it adds to my passions. Mm -hmm. you know, the gifts and the talents, what I was given, does this add to me and to others? Yeah. Or selfish, you know, does, does it include more? Yeah. Or is it just like for me? And I always found when I I'm looking and I set my attentions to get things that I want in my life, yeah. when I said that it serves more and everyone, and it's good for it, it feels good in my heart and it comes about so much easier than if it's for reasons that aren't aligned with the heart. Right. Action, appreciation, attention, and acceptance. Those are the main heart feelings. And I think if you thought of those when you get angry or upset, and sometimes you need attention. Yeah. You need acceptance. Like, I want you to accept me. Mm -hmm. And if you stop and think about it, then you can ask for what you need. Yeah. Instead of just getting angry and upset, because sometimes... I know I do. I get angry and upset. I'm like, why am I like that? 
Yeah. I take a breath and say, what do I really need? Right. Sometimes I need a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Just a hug, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like changes everything. It does. It does. It's so true. It's so true. You know, and I, and I love, you know, you have, you have the Red House Wellness and I want you to tell me a little about that. I, I'm going there next month. So I'm very excited because I'm going to be experiencing everything you teach, but tell everybody a little bit about what you do there and how it can make a huge impact on people's lives. Because, you know, the, some of the things you, you teach help with stress and anxiety helps you look at life differently. So, you know, tell everybody a little about what Red House Wellness is. Thank you. When order Red House Wellness is a place to discover your full body health and your personal empowerment. So I look at it, if you want optimal health, because there's different levels of health. Yes. You know, there's, you, you take a little test and it can be fair, good, really good. I look for optimal. I want optimal health. Yes. It needs to look at the four pillars of the physical, emotional, mental and spiritual yes you know and your body's your home i say this all the time if you don't take care of it where are you going to live right and it's changing your physical state like like this mm -hmm. to open up, grounding out okay i'm going to stand up right now if i said you know if we're getting tired right now i say stacy stand up let's mm -hmm. stand up now change our energy change our state and we could sit down and we'd have a different energy for this conversation right. obviously to stand up now because I know you're all in your studio ready to go, but just standing up, yeah, whoo, would change our whole physical state, right? What you eat, how you eat, when you eat, when you sleep, how often you sleep all these things come into factors going out in nature, yeah. the mm -hmm. circadian rhythm, all these things. Some people say, I have great health, and they do, it's the ones that aren't sure, yeah. Or the ones that have great health, but aren't sure how they got it. So then they need to remember it in case they lose it in the future. <laughs> and then the emotional, emotional freedom. I like to say, you know how we ingest, digest, and eliminate a sandwich, right? We're going to yeah. ingest it. We digest. We do that with emotions. People yeah. don't realize it. So when you say something to me, I hear it. I think about it goes around. Does that feel good? I kind of digest it. Yeah. And it's supposed to eliminate it. Right. Let it go. And we don't. Yeah. We hang on to it. Five years from now. I remember when Stacy said that five years ago. Yeah. It's comical. Why are you still holding on to that? Exactly. And that causes stress and anxiety. And there's a place people say, I have, I have anger resentment. I can't, I'm mad at this person, this situation. So we do a lot of healing at Red House. Yeah. And I'm not concerned with anyone except you and what that does to you, but right. holding on to resentment and not forgiving. I didn't say forget. I just said not to have an emotional charge yeah. what's going to happen to you. So right. it needs to be a place in your heart needs to say this happened and what can you do with what's already happened to you? Right. That's when we start to, through awareness and journaling and writing, to figure out, to put it in a place where it doesn't upset you anymore. Because that will age you faster than going out in the sun. Yes. Stress. <laughs> and then mentally, you know, realizing that people forget that they always have a choice. And I hear people say, Sherry, I don't really, I don't have a choice. I am stuck. You have no idea. I might get it a and I truly believe, Stacy, you have a choice. I do too. With your words, your thoughts, your actions, and you need to see it in a different perspective. So mm -hmm. getting out of your environment and your home and coming to a place like Red House for six days, you see different possibilities, different insights that you might not have seen before. Yeah. And if you decide, like, I don't, I can't leave this marriage for whatever reason, then you shift the way you think about it. Right. Quit complaining, find some gratitude mm -hmm. and enjoy that. Yes. So that's the choice you have. Yes. You moaning and complaining and saying, blah, 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 blah. That is going to get you sick with disease. Yes. You know, and then spiritually, I just, 
I just want everyone to know how unique and special everyone is with their gifts and their talents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you love and your creator's will for you are one and the same. Yeah. What you love and God's will for you is mm -hmm. one of the same. What you love and the angels will, whatever you believe, yeah. how you came about, what you love, what makes you happy. Yes. And whoever created you wants you to use those gifts so that you are passionate, happy, have joy, so that it ripples out to everyone else. Yes. And I think sometimes we get caught up from our childhood and belief systems are like, you got to make a lot of money. You got to get the house. You got to get the kids. You got to put the kids in school. Like the more you have, the more you need it. And we forget like to be joyful along the way. Yeah. And that's actually what we like to do. Right. You know, so coming to Red House Wellness will help you discover your full body health. Mm -hmm. and take back your personal empowerment. Yeah. Realize going inside and finding that happiness and peace inside out instead of outside in. Yes. A great little movie, Inside Out. Inside, mm -hmm. you know, you'll really see things differently. It's like you'll take off those rose colored glasses and you'll be like, I can see again. I can see the true meaning and purpose. Because if I asked you, Stacey, what do you think the meaning of life is? Why are we here? What would you say? Why are you here? Yeah, for you. Why are you here? I feel we, we're all put here for a purpose that we, this is a, a, a planet to learn and to, and, and the things that we've learned previously, we bring with us and we're here to do good. We're here to, to help others, you know, and we all have special gifts, but we're not, everyone knows how to utilize those gifts. And do you think you're put on this planet to struggle? No. And, okay. And we go through times of struggle to learn the tools and the resources mm -hmm. so that the next circumstance that comes, it'll be a little bit easier. Yes. We're not, I don't believe we're meant to stay in this life of, ugh, yeah, and, and struggling and horrible and lack of, and I don't have enough and I can't get out and I'm just stuck. Mm -hmm. That is the mindset yeah. that I'm to show you with tools and resources, how to shift it. And it takes time because some people come to Red House and they're, you know, 40 years old or 50 or 60. And they're like, can you fix it in a day? And I'm like, <laughs> did it take a day to get like this? You know, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. you, you've been creating your life for 40, 50, 60 years. And we can do things like this within a minute that can help you become aware to start to see the journey that yeah. you can take to evolve, to shift, to start saying every day, I'm going to wake up and do something that gives me joy. Right. Or I'm going to smile or I'm going to play music or I'm going to dance or I'm going to call my friends. Like, so we start to show you how you create what you want, not what I want, not what I think Stacy should have. Cause I already right. think you should have all these great things, but it doesn't matter what I think. Right. It matters that you use your gifts and your tools like you are right now mm -hmm. to show the world how it can be just easier and better. Yeah. So I say you come on a Sunday, you leave on a Saturday, lighter and wiser in every mm -hmm. dimension. That's I our it. all this little tag. I love it. I love it. And if you had to like, you know, uh, if you had to maybe create a couple of steps people could utilize at home to help them when they get, into, we've gone over quite a few already, but if people are at home or they're at work and they they feel stressed and they feel anxiety or they have trouble just dealing with life itself, is there some things they could actually implement into their lives to kind of help them along the way? Yes. And I've said it and I want to say it again and make it just very easy. If we could just go back to the ABCs, which I just said, but I'm going to make it easier. Number one is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Like accept right now where you are. So right. whether you're happy, whether you're not, whether you're having anxiety, I say, I accept it. Because yeah. once you accept where you are, then you can help find to move forward. Accept, mm -hmm. use your breath. Yes. You said today, when you breathe, it changed your state. Yes. So if we're all anxiety and I'm so stressed and I can't do what to do. But 
breathing like that changes the state. So acceptance, breathe, and remember you have a choice. You could get up right then and say, I'm going to go outside and take a walk, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a glass of water. I think I need a nap. I think I need to lead this conversation. Yes. I think I need to do something that's going to fill me up. Those three things, A, B, C. If you thought about A, B, C, the next time you had anxiety and stress, you would start to see a shift and you'd start to be more open-minded, more expansive viewpoint. Yes. You would see your life to shift. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, just like what we learn in kindergarten. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Now, are there any other takeaways you'd like to emphasize that you could think of? I would just, I'd like to leave everyone because I know this always thinks, is, is the next time you say to yourself, I can't, or I'm not worthy, or I'm stupid, or I can't do that. I want you, in, or saying, I want to, but I don't have the skills. I want you to remember that you're amazing, that you are a gift. Give thanks and utilize that. So you can say, I'm tired and I'm going to see if I can get the energy to do what I need to do next. Yes. I don't know how to do that. I feel stupid. Okay. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm pretty smart. So when you find yourself saying something negative, see if you can put an and with something positive or do an action mm -hmm. that gets you out of that. Like I'm tired and I'm going to get up because yeah. I know I need a glass of water mm -hmm. always helps your body. Yes. When we're tired, sometimes we're just thirsty. Yeah. And by taking a sip of water or changing and getting up or walking around, mm -hmm. well, your point. So I just wish everyone knows on this beautiful podcast with Stacy, the advisor with Stacy, mm -hmm. that you are worthy, that you are whole, and find evidence in yourself that make those statements true. I love it. Now, where can people find you? So we're in Park City, Utah. Mm -hmm. That's where the retreats are. And you can find me at info at redhousewellness.com. That's our email, info at redhousewellness.com. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook, um, Red House Wellness. And I'd love to hear from you. We, um, I do coaching on how to take you from where you are to where you want to go. Our team is amazing. So you can reach out and uh, we do a passion workshop that helps people identify their passion. So look us up, Red House Wellness, Park City, Utah. I love it. This has been amazing. I can't wait to come back and I can't wait till I come down there and I get to experience it myself and I'll be taking lots of pictures and send them on my internet so everybody can see how great it is. And I'm very excited. I can't wait to go. I'll be going the last week, I believe it is the last week of June, actually this month. Oh my goodness. It, it, time is flying. It's going to be this month. Yeah. So the last week of this month, I'll be in Utah and I'll be with Sherry and we will be having the experience of a lifetime. So thank, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'll talk to you soon. Yes. Bye-bye.